Chairs No Waiting, episode number 167. May Merry Christmas to all, 2011. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Drop by over at Weavers. They've even got some Christmas lights up right now for Christmas time. All kinds of things there for your friends and family that are Mayberry fans. So drop by weaversdepartmentstore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by audible.com. Drop by audible.com and you'll find 100,000 audiobooks that you can get. You can get a free one, 14-day free trial, free audiobook from Two Chairs No Waiting if you drop by audibletrial.com slash two chairs. So drop by. Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, your host of Two Chairs No Waiting. And man, it is so good to have you here again with me tonight. This is, uh, can you believe it, Christmas time again in Mayberry? There were only uh, one episode of the Andy Griffith Show. It was a Christmas episode. And this is our fourth Christmas episode of <laughs> the Two Chairs No Waiting podcast. Wow. Something is strange about that to me. But uh, I am so glad to be able to spend this Christmas and special family time with you because it is Christmas time and it is uh, time for family. And what better than Mayberry and friends and family to be able to share with one another. And really, it is a pleasure for me every week to be able to come into your life and just to be a little bit of, uh, of a part of it, you know, and to share that with you. And that's what Christmas is all about now. You know, we've got all kinds of fun stuff coming up tonight, and, uh, you know, we're going to be going through Christmas music and Christmas things that are all Mayberry related, because we all love them, and uh, like I said, there's only one Christmas episode, but there's a lot of Christmas spirit in Mayberry, so we're going to be heading into that, but before we go all the way into that, let's go and listen to a couple of voicemail feedbacks we got. Now, the first one was from the uh, podcast of uh, last week. And the week before is like a 166 and 165 in reverse order. It was the uh, Cruise to the Taylor's House, parts one and two. Well, this first voicemail comes in from Larry Granger. So let's go and hear from Larry. Hey, Alan, Larry Granger here. Just got through listening to the first uh, Mayberry Cruise Taylor Home Inn podcast. Wanted to let you know that uh, or take this opportunity to say we really enjoyed our time on the cruise. It was our first Mayberry cruise, and it was thoroughly a good time and of hanging out with everybody and enjoying all the shows. And unless something changes, we plan on making one in October. Anyway, still enjoy the podcast. Been listening since the first one. Keep up good work. Thanks, big guy. Well, Larry, I want to thank you for uh, calling in, and thank you for going on the cruise with us. It was a great time on the Mayberry cruise, and we got to hear those last two podcasts were done live. Uh, on the cruise and so when you listen to it the audio may sound a little weird because we were in a big room and I was doing the recording of the audio in that room but uh, it's a great story and if you haven't gotten to listen to or hear episodes 165 and 166 cruise to the Taylor house part one and two uh, I encourage you to go back and do that this is a that's a great part about a podcast if you missed one you can just go back and pick it up And uh, I definitely recommend you do the video versions of those because they have all the pictures and even more pictures, actually, than they saw on the cruise because I added stuff, especially to part two, uh, as I did the podcast. So there's a lot more images and things like that. So definitely want to encourage you to go there and check it out. Now, we got another voicemail. This one's coming in from Ken Anderson about the same thing, talking about the Taylor Home Inn. So let's go ahead and hear from Ken. Yeah, hello, Alan. Ken Anderson here in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I just have to call and uh, share a few memories of uh, the Taylor Home Inn. I enjoyed your two podcasts so much. It brought back so many wonderful memories. Uh, Lynn and I spent 11 times at that inn, and uh, what Marcia and Dave had done up there was just, just incredible. And uh, all the things that we have experienced up there are just hard to put into words, but probably the, the most memorable is just the friendship that we developed with Marcia over those years. Uh, going up there the 11 times, she got to be really good friends with Marcia and her hospitality. And uh, it seemed like every time we went up there, we got to find a little bit more detail that we missed in the previous time. So just want to thank Ma- Marcia for all the wonderful memories and the experiences that we had up at the Taylor Home Inn. And uh, also to uh, thank you for the time you spent with us when we were up there. So uh, Merry Christmas to everybody on the Digest and everybody from Two Chairs No Waiting. You have a very Merry Christmas. Thanks. Wow, thanks, Ken. Thank you again for calling in. And if you didn't get to see 
the uh, episodes last week on the video, you can actually see video of Ken Anderson. He's in the video with Floyd, where Floyd brings in the, the folks into the courthouse and is telling them about the uh, the uh, courthouse and how Andy was uh, not been a lawman since Wyatt Earp, you know, talking about that. And Ken is in that video as well. So definitely drop by and check that out. And uh, it was a, those are some really good podcasts, and I hope you guys enjoyed those because uh, I know I certainly did. Now yeah, we got a lot of Mayberry stuff that's Christmas that we want to go through tonight. A year or so ago, a fellow named Ben Sanderfer, he sent in a wonderful, wonderful uh, I guess a poem, it was, uh, called Christmas in Mayberry. Now, Ben has since then gone on to make a podcast called Solid Gold Sock Hop. The Solid Gold Sock Hop, there's a website to it at solidgoldsockhop.podbean.com that you can go and listen to it every week. Now, what it is, it's music from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. It's, it's old top 40 radio stuff like uh, Casey Kasem used to do. So I definitely encourage you. There's a Facebook page about it, the Solid Gold Sock Hop. If you search it out, you'll find it. But uh, Ben was able to put together this Christmas in Mayberry. Uh, and wow, I got to tell you, Ben has some very high quality uh, production values. Uh, it makes my podcast sound like, uh, well, not like his. His is very good. And I think you're going to see some of that as we go in here and listen to Christmas in Mayberry by Ben Sanders, uh, Sanderfer. I mean, let me fade out this music because we want to hear this. But here it is Christmas in Mayberry. <laughs> was the night before Christmas and all through Mayberry, this year's Santa would become legendary. A picture from Otis was hung up with care by the one of the rows which had won at the fair. The children had put up the last Christmas wreath, Opie and Mary Wiggins who'd lost her front teeth, and Andy with no gun adorned his nightcap just in case feuding families finally ended their scrap. When out on the street there came a great noise. Could it be Briscoe, Charlene, and the Darling Boys? It probably wasn't that nut named Bass. It didn't sound one bit like shattering glass. No snow, just a steady rain fell from the sky. It had rained every day since those gypsies came by. When up came a black Ford automobile with way yonder too much grease on the wheel. With a skinny little driver who still had no wife, he was known by such names as Fast Gun Fife. His car barely made it, slowly moving along. A mechanic named Pyle had told him all that was wrong. Needs points, needs plugs, needs new wires by gosh, and she could also really use a good wash. To the tailor's driveway, he parked right behind Mr. Tucker's big car, cause he changed his mind. He looked at the house and wished he could fly. Then a ladder next to the house caught his eagle eye. He'd climb up the ladder, yep, that was the plan. It was left there by Wheeler, Aunt B's handyman. He knew how to enter a room with such ease. He taught Ernest T with full amenities. But on this special night, the door would not do, so down the chimney the thin deputy flew. He was dressed in a uniform. Now what could be dumber? This night, I doubt he'd encounter Fred Plummer. His hair floyd had slicked down, but not a bit drippy, in case fingers ran through from a fun girl named Skippy. His hat held his ticket book just in case the governor's car was parked in the wrong place. The bullet in his pocket was shiny and neat, and if he should use it, watch out for your feet. When he sang, it just kind of made you sick, cause he couldn't sing, not one single lick. Even an old-fashioned recitation didn't work. After all, you can't make a bird go chirp, chirp. He had not an ounce of fat, which helped him hustle. He could eat all the cookies since they all went to muscle. He had little time and might get in a pinch, since a tightwad named Weaver might turn into the Grinch. He spoke not a word, there was much work to do, he still had to call Juanita and say toodaloo. For Opie, he left some shiny new skates, and a guitar, the kind that Lydia Crossweight hates. For Aunt B, he left 24 canning jars, more kerosene cucumbers for out-of-state cars. He left his friend Andy a hat and a tie. He'd never wear either, but he still had to try. And when he had finished, he went out the door. He'd saved enough time for just one thing more. To Thelma Lou's house, he now had to go for a pan of her fudge and that doctor show. He cranked up his car on the third or fourth try. On his cycle and sidecar, he could better rely. But I heard him exclaim, as he drove through the mud. Merry Christmas to all. Now nip it in the bud. (laughs) 
great job by Ben Sandifer. Again, he's a solid gold sock cop. He's got a podcast headed out. Uh, he's done several weeks of it now. It's a lot of fun to listen to if you like older music. And I definitely encourage you. And give Ben a, a shout out and tell him, hey, from the uh, Two Chairs No Waiting podcast. He's, uh, he's a great guy. So thanks, Ben, for uh, allowing us to play that again this year. It was, uh, it was wonderful. Now, we've got uh, a really another thing that was very special. Now, this guy... His name is uh, is Charlie Monk. Charlie Monk is the mayor of Music Row. <laughs> That's what his name. And he has a great, great new uh, video and, and audio that is called Andy and Opie Christmas. Now, the Andy and Opie Christmas is, uh, is available for sale. We'll give you the information about that as well as we go through. But I want you to be able to hear that and see it if you're watching the video. So uh, let's go ahead and hear this. It's a great, great Mayberry spirited uh, story. So let's hear this. I was watching an old Andy Griffith show the other day and notice how the people of Mayberry were celebrating Christmas. I got to thinking what does Christmas really mean today? Is it any different now than it was in the small town where I grew up? Watching Andy and Opie did bring back some very special memories. You see, my hometown was a lot like Mayberry. My dad used to joke that we were so small that welcome to and hurry back was on the same sign. I think small towns were a lot different than the big cities especially at Christmas time. For instance, all the stores waited until after Thanksgiving before they decorated for Christmas. When I was a kid, the town folks hung green garlands and striped candy canes from light poles. <laughs> Even the red, yellow, and green of our one traffic light seemed to be part of the festive decor. I remember all the fancy flickering lights that were strung along the storefronts and the display windows that were filled with boxes wrapped as gifts and lots of stuffed Santas. We chopped down our own Christmas tree in the pasture nearby. We drug it home and helped Dad make our own stand. You know, we had so much fun when our grandparents helped us make multicolored paper chains and popcorn strings to put on the tree. Most of our ornaments, of course, were handmade at school or church. Our family only had one string of lights, but all the bulbs lit up every year. My mama made cakes, pies, and cookies, <laughs> and no matter what room you're in, there was that aroma of those soon-to-be-enjoyed goodies. We had eggnog, and there was the wonderful smell of spiced apple cider. That's the kind of stuff Aunt B would have made. Looking back, we didn't have much, but we didn't know it. Oh, we didn't have a fireplace, by the way, but Santa always found a way in. Church was the second home for small town folks, but at Christmas time, it became the focus. And every church had a Christmas play. Now, all the kids wanted to be Mary, Joseph, or the three wise men, <laughs> or a camel. Oh, it was just great fun. One of my favorite memories was when families gathered together, put on their warmest coats, caps, and mittens, and roamed the streets singing Christmas carols. Like Andy, Opie, and Barney most likely did, people in my hometown shared gifts and baskets of food with the neighbors that might not have as much as they did. Our sheriff even let some of the people we called guests of the county go home on Christmas Eve. But if my memory serves me, when I was young, the holiday season was really more about giving, not about getting, which made it more about doing for others than buying for others. You see, that was the small town way. And in my hometown, or any town like Mayberry, there seemed to be more emphasis on the reason for the season. Yes, 
we should remember the good times. The giving and receiving of gifts, the laughter, the merriment, but we should also stop and remember that we're celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Merry Christmas from me, Andy, and Opie. Wow, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was from Charlie Monk. And you can go to uh, youtube.com slash the real Charlie, C H A R L I E M O N K, Monk. And there'll be a link in the show notes for that. You can go watch that video. You can check it out. Uh, now, as I said, there's also the for sale. You can buy the uh, music and the song at either iTunes or Amazon.com. You can go to either one, they'll be there and you'll find it. Definitely encourage you to do that just to support Charlie. I want to thank him for allowing me and you to be able to hear that tonight on the podcast. They gave me permission, and uh, that's great. I, I, I can't say enough about that. Does that not bring back all kinds of wonderful, wonderful Mayberry feelings in your life, just remembering family and everything? And, uh, you know, what, what what's that? I hear something else. What? Somebody's coming. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Ho, ho! That's the best Santa Claus I ever heard. You hear that? Well, folks, I, uh, I want to definitely encourage you just to spend time with your family, visit with them, you know, be like Mayberry, you know, spend that time. That's what's going to be important. Years from now, you're going to remember what you did at Christmas, not because it was Christmas and what you got, because I couldn't tell you what I got last year. I barely remember, but I can remember being around my family and my friends and visiting, and those things, they stick with you. So I'd like to hear from you guys coming up next in the next week here. I'd love to hear from you for the next podcast. You can call me at 888-684-8415. You can, uh, you can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. You can write in uh, and, and just send me stuff like that. You can go to twochairsnowaiting.com and leave me a message or to facebook.com slash twochairs. Any of those ways. I want to hear from you because that's what makes this fun for me is hearing from you. Now, I'd like to hear some memories you got of Christmases past or even this Christmas that are Mayberry-like. I think folks might like hearing that because, you know, we hear so many things in life that's just not, not fun. Let's share some fun with each other and the joy that we have. Now, anyway, I hope to hear from you about that. Now, the last several years, the way we've ended the Christmas episode of the podcast is with Miss Ellie herself, singing Away in a Manger. So I believe we'll do that again this year. And when she's finished, we'll be done. So we'll see you guys next week on Two Chairs No Waiting, your Mayberry podcast. Talk to you later, guys. Bye. Remember? lay down his sweet head the stars in the sky look down where he lay the little lord jesus asleep on the hay the cattle are lowing the poor baby wakes but little Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Lay down his sweet head The stars in the sky Look down where he lay The little Lord Jesus Asleep on the hay